in this video, we're going to try to explain epigenetics. Now, firstly, what does epigenetics mean? Because you could be asked for a definition. So epigenetics means heritable, so can be passed on to offspring. Heritable changes in DNA without altering the base sequence. So we're not talking about mutations, we're not talking about changes to the base sequence of the DNA or new alleles, but what we're talking about is chemicals around the DNA. So there's a chemical layer, and these are kind of chemical tags, and this layer is called the epigenome, okay? So these are chemical tags that interact with the DNA and the histone proteins. Now remember, DNA and histone proteins together, we call that complex chromatin. So these chemical tags or the epigenome kind of surrounds the chromatin, surrounds the DNA histone protein complex, and it affects gene expression. So we're not actually changing the DNA base sequence, we're not creating new alleles, but differences in these chemical tags and in the amounts of these chemical tags can affect gene expression. So it can lead to gene expression being switched on or gene expression being switched off. Now you need to learn about two examples for A-level. So we're going to learn about methyl groups and acetyl groups. Okay, so they're the two chemical tags that we need to learn. Let's think about methyl groups first and how they can affect gene expression. So here we've got a section of DNA and the little triangles here are the methyl groups. And what you can see, hopefully, is if we add methyl groups to the DNA, and in fact, these methyl groups bind specifically to cytosine bases in the DNA, if we add methyl groups to those cytosine bases, then the methyl groups are kind of physically blocking the DNA. They are physically blocking the gene. So now let's imagine if we have increased methylation or we increase the number of methyl groups on the promoter region of a gene, then the transcription factor cannot bind. The transcription factor cannot bind to the promoter region, and that means that our enzyme, which would be RNA polymerase, which is responsible for transcription, cannot initiate transcription. So gene expression here would be switched off. Now let's write this down. We've got increased methylation, or we can call it hypermethylation. And remember, methyl groups attach to DNA. Specifically, they attach to the cytosine bases in DNA. They can prevent or block the transcription factor from binding, because they're kind of in the way, right? And if the transcription factor can't bind, then RNA polymerase cannot initiate transcription or transcription cannot take place. Therefore, gene expression is switched off. That gene will not be transcribed and translated because the transcription factor is unable to bind to the promoter region. Therefore, RNA polymerase cannot attach and it cannot initiate transcription. Then you won't make the mRNA, then you won't make the polypeptide. You won't transcribe that gene or translate it. We say gene expression is switched off. Now, you could get the opposite of this, by the way. You could get what we call hypomethylation. Now, hypomethylation is obviously where you decrease methylation of the DNA. And you'd see the opposite thing. So if you decrease methylation, so you've got fewer methyl groups attached to the cytosine bases, then obviously the transcription factor can bind. 
RNA polymerase can initiate transcription, so you can actually get an increase in gene expression. Let's talk about our second example. Now, our second example, we were thinking about acetyl groups. Now, acetyl groups don't actually bind to DNA like the methyl groups do. Acetyl groups bind to the histone proteins. So these black circles here are my histone proteins. And these white circles are my acetyl groups. So I've tried to show you here, you know, here's a chromosome, here's the DNA kind of magnified. I can see the DNA is wrapped around histone proteins. We call that chromatin. Acetyl groups actually attach to the histone proteins. Now, histone proteins have a positive charge, don't they? And DNA has a negative charge because of the negatively charged phosphate groups in the DNA nucleotides. Now, when we add acetyl groups to the histone proteins, the acetyl groups reduce the positive charge. Those acetyl groups, when they're attached to the histone proteins, they reduce the positive charge of the histone proteins. So you've got less of an attraction between the histone proteins and the negatively charged DNA. And with less of an attraction, the DNA histone protein complex will be less tightly wrapped, which means the transcription factors can bind, RNA polymerase can attach, and you will get translation and switch gene expression on. But what if we decrease acetylation? Now, this is the one we're going to write down because, let me get a board rubber. We're going to write about decreased acetylation because this is one that they often talk about. I'll do it here. So if we decrease acetylation of the histone proteins, remember acetyl groups bind to histone proteins, not DNA. If we decrease that acetylation, so we're going to remove those acetyl groups from the histone proteins, then the histone proteins become more positively charged. Now, you don't really need to know that. I'm just trying to make it make sense so you understand why the DNA and histones become more tightly wrapped. It's because if we remove the acetyl groups from the histone proteins, the histone proteins become more positively charged. So you've got a greater attraction between the DNA, which remember is negatively charged, and the histone proteins, which now have more of a positive charge. So you get more tightly coiled or more tightly wrapped chromatin. Yeah, so the attraction is stronger between the histone proteins positive, the DNA negative. So that chromatin is going to be more tightly coiled or more tightly wrapped. Now, what does this mean? Well, transcription factor cannot bind to the promoter region because it's kind of hidden because the chromatin is so tightly wrapped. So again, we're going to see transcription cannot occur. Because if the transcription factor cannot bind, obviously RNA polymerase cannot attach, it cannot initiate transcription, transcription will not occur, we won't make the RNA, we won't then make the polypeptide, so gene expression is switched off. Now again, the opposite is true if we increase acetylation, I'll just add them back on, if we increase acetylation, then the chromatin becomes more loosely coiled or loosely wrapped. And then we do initiate transcription and we can actually see more transcription and more gene expression. OK, in summary. Let's just think about the most important things to remember, because I've just given you a lot of information there. But in summary, this is kind of the basics. If we increase methylation, of DNA or we decrease acetylation of histone 
proteins, we can inhibit transcription and gene expression is switched off. That's how I remember it. I remember increased methylation and then it's the opposite. It's decreased acetylation of the histone proteins, inhibits transcription because the transcription, transcription factor can't bind. So RNA polymerase cannot initiate transcription. So gene expression is switched off with either of these two examples. I hope you found that useful. Remember, you do need to link this to your knowledge of cancer and genes that control the cell cycle. So I'll just give you one quickly to think about. If we have increased methylation of a tumour suppressor gene, remember tumour suppressor genes code for proteins that inhibit the cell cycle and prevent uncontrollable cell division. If we get increased methylation of a tumour suppressor gene, that gene is not transcribed, the protein is not produced, and that can lead to uncontrollable cell division and tumour formation. So those do two topics do link together. Let me know in the comments if you found this useful, if it's helped you to understand this particularly tricky topic.